So um, morning, everybody. Uh, my name is David Tan. I'm a member of the VTC committee and the co-host of this workshop. Uh, Saigon South International School is honored to collaborate and be hosting the ninth annual Vietnam Conf Tech Conference um, with Unite Unis in Hanoi. Um, and it's also my honor on behalf of the VTC committee to introduce you to Peter Hess and his collaborator, Debbie Odie, Debbie Jody, who will talk to us about teaching, teach coding with zero coding experience required in the upcoming workshop. Peter brings 30 plus years of business experience across Canada and the US uh, with the last five plus years being an educational technology field in Atlantic Canada. A proud graduate of Mount Allison's University Commerce Program, Peter has also earned a Master's of Business Administration degree from Purdue University's Craner Graduate School of Business in West Lafayette, Canada, or India, Indiana, sorry, uh, during his time living and working in the US. Welcome, Peter and Deb Jody. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Uh, appreciate it, David. Um, Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's evening uh, in Canada, but uh, good morning to you. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We're excited to see the, uh, the uh, turnout here today, and uh, we're very interested in, in uh, showing uh, a little bit about our courses and our platform and the system that we put into place. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank the uh, Consulate General of Canada for our, their support. Molly, I know you're there. Thank you very much uh, for your support. Um, what we're going to do is, is I'll give you a bit of background on the company, where we started, why we started, uh, what we're trying to accomplish uh, in the course uh, design, as well as the system design, the support around the courses um, from a high level perspective. And then I'll pass it over to my associate, Deba Jody, who will uh, show you the system, show you some of the courses, show you uh, the, the support tools that are there for the students but also the support tools that are there for teachers as well. Um, so let me give you a step back uh, to 2016. Um, we were created uh, by two uh, immigrants uh, to Canada from Haiti, um, uh, Giverson and his wife, uh, Myrta. And they had three young sons they brought to Canada with them in roughly 2013 timeframe. And Deba jo or sorry, uh, Guy had, uh, the uh, good fortune of, of having been exposed to coding lessons as a young child growing up in Haiti. Um, he went to one of the Christian schools that they have set up there and, and was introduced to it, fell in love with coding uh, from 12 years old. Uh, and of course, he, he, uh, he did what every uh, good son did. He followed his mother's advice and became an accountant. Uh, but after he, he got his education in accounting, he uh, he went back to school and, and also got uh, more on the coding side of things. When he moved to Canada, he discovered very quickly there was an opportunity for uh, coding. He set up his own uh, app development company and his sons, his three sons, uh, expressed interest in learning to code as well. He found out very quickly that coding was not taught in our schools here back uh, in 2015, 2016. So as a good entrepreneur, what does he do? He set up his own. He set up camps going into the schools, uh, doing after-school programs. They developed their own curriculum, and uh, and and, uh, and and brought it to the local town. Uh, in, in thinking about how to scale this up, the what he kept coming around to was was the fact that there was a lack of trained computer science teachers. Uh, that seemed to be the biggest issue whenever you talk to anybody anywhere. And, and really the, the reason being is industry is, is soaking everybody up. I mean, they, there's a huge shortage of, of computer science uh, programmers. Um, so there's, there's very few that uh, would be left over to go into the teaching profession. Now, probably many of you uh, or people, your colleagues uh, are, are getting trained in it and, and, uh, and learning it uh, because you see it as value bringing to your schools and, and that's great. Um, but this, this kind of aha moment uh, made him realize that he needed to develop courses that were uh, um, perhaps more self-directed for the students, uh, but also had support around the student um, uh, because the subject matter expert now is no longer the teacher um, necessarily. I mean, there's situations obviously where, where the teacher will uh, have the knowledge and will be able to supplement uh, some of our courses. 
Um, but the whole idea was let's develop a platform, a support platform, LMS system, and the course content around the fact that there may not be a trained computer science teacher in the room. Um, so, so they developed uh, multiple support uh, mechanisms, but the courses themselves are designed, and Deva Jody will go through this and show you, they're designed to be very short micro video lessons. So they're, they're less than two minutes in, in, uh, in duration. They give uh, a, a small concept, then they ask the student to do an exercise through some code, uh, some AI, a uh, uh, bit of AI code correction tool. Um, the, the exercise is uh, uh, marked and the student, is, uh, any errors are identified immediately to the student. So on, on line such and such, uh, this, this uh, was, was done wrong. And so they, they learn from that small exercise. Then the loop is repeated and repeated and repeated and slowly and sequentially, uh, more and more difficult information is, is provided and the exercise cements the knowledge and through uh, the use of either uh, real story-based story uh, courses or game-based that are actually Okay, uh, but I apologize about uh, the internet connection here uh, in advance. Um, but we use real life uh, stories and examples so that kids stay engaged. It's all about the engagement. Uh, we know what it's like to, to uh, try and, and, uh, and keep uh, 10, 12, 14 year olds uh, focused and engaged. And that's what this is all about. It's designed, it's animated videos, very interesting and exciting. Um, and then real life story. So, so they're building these games and at the end of it, they actually play the game they just built and they've learned all the concepts along the way uh, for whether it's uh, JavaScript or Python or, or HTML and, and they're having fun doing it. They don't even know that they're learning, right? Um, so we built in things like they, they can't skip ahead. They have to follow sequentially, um, but they can speed up or slow down the videos. We built in a lot of learning, uh, learning tool, learning ability tools. I'll call them um, assistance tools, such as the uh, the speed of uh, the videos. They can control the speed. They can slow it down. Uh, they can speed it up. They can obviously pause it and repeat it. Um, there's uh, subtitles in the video, so if they're better at reading uh, for comprehension, they can, they can read it. Um, what are some of the other tools? Deb and Jody will go, go through them all. I'm just trying to do off the top of my head, but, uh, but uh, you, you kind of get the idea uh, there. There's a lot of built-in support. The, uh, I mentioned the code correction tool. It's really walking them hand in hand through the exercises. Um, uh, again, showing them where they got uh, mistakes and getting them to correct the mistakes and then running it. We have motivational things built into it, such as, uh, three-star ratings to, to kind of keep them motivated and keep them engaged again. Um, so the Deb and Jody will show you uh, a lot of what I'm telling you about, but it was designed again uh, with the knowledge that we want to be self-directing. We want the children to, to be able to go through these courses and, and, uh, and, and get the support from within the, the platform itself. Many teachers are using this that, that do have knowledge in computer science. And Deba Jody will show you, show you the teacher tools that we have as well. Uh, we've given the ability to uh, limit the progress of, uh, within a course. So for a class, for example, you can allow them to progress so many lessons within the course, and then everybody has to stop. And that's when the teacher can engage in discussion. What did we just learn in these last two lessons and, and kind of um, have a group discussion or maybe also an offline exercise to cement the knowledge of, uh, of what the children have just learned. Um, we follow the CSTA guidelines um, um, and we can provide the, uh, um, the kind of the alignment uh, document that we have for each of our courses so you can see for each lesson broken down what is it we're uh, trying to accomplish? What is it we're teaching? And then what, uh, how does that align with the CSTA uh, guidelines uh, for, for that course? So we can certainly share those uh, after for those who are interested. Um, some of the other tools, uh, Debbie Jody will show you and go through. The teacher has the ability to, uh, 
to add students, to, uh, to, to give them access to specific courses they want, to give them extra uh, courses once, uh, you know, for the more advanced students, perhaps as they finish one course, they can uh, put them in a, another class and, and uh, open up another uh, course for those students type of thing. There's uh, after the course we've just introduced, actually just last week, we just launched a new uh, 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 section of our, of our website that Deb and Jody will show you that allows the teacher to give um, post-course uh, extra work. So there's uh, uh, two different scenarios. One is where uh, for the, the really advanced students, we give them a blank screen and allow them to just play, just create, just go. And uh, we give them kind of the library, the, the tools to, to build with, but it's up to them to code. The other one is, is, uh, is uh, more of, uh, we give them part of the equation and they can go and modify things and add things and take things out and really kind of create uh, their own version of some existing uh, exercises. So there's additional tools like that that we're, we're trying to come up with all the time and, and, uh, and through feedback from, from great teachers, we're, we're able to improve on, on that. So, uh, so I think I've spoken long enough. Uh, I, Again, welcome everybody, and we really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you. And uh, if anybody does uh, have any questions, uh, uh, certainly uh, put them in the, the chat. I'll be I'll be watching for that while uh, Deborah Jody does the actual presentation, and then following that, we'll have a Q and A. If we hopefully we should have time and uh, answer any questions at that point. And if we do run out of time, we're more than happy to set up a one on one call similar to this uh, to discuss things a little more in depth uh, with you specifically. So, so with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to Deb and Jody and I'll put myself on mute. So thanks again. Thank you, Peter. And uh, welcome everyone. And thanks to Molly, David, and entire. Uh, uh, people who have organized uh, this lovely uh, detailed interaction. Now, uh, just to start with, I was just thinking like uh, within a year, we have changed a lot. Change a lot means uh, it's a paradigm shift for every industry. So same as education and technology join hands. So coming into picture like uh, Peter has explained you that how exactly EduCode has explored how we have uh, came into existence, what exactly our uh, background and all. And I will show you what uh, the our tools and all, and what exactly our pedagogy, what are the USPs, what we have, and what are the things like uh, uh, in our platform a person can do, how exactly it's different. Now coming uh, into picture, what I will just uh, screen share my uh, the, like uh, demo details and all. And uh, I will be going by uh, exactly showing what are the tools which is there because in uh, our software is very difficult to uh, show entire details within a short span of time. However, we can uh, set up uh, later on. However, you can able to get what are the tools which is important to understand uh, the entire features. So what I will do it, I will screen share uh, my screen. Uh, is it uh, visible now? I think everyone yes, can see that. Here. Yeah, thank you. So uh, the screen which looks like, if you see top right corner, which is looks like uh, it's a similar, it's written as teacher, top right corner, it's a welcome teacher. That means this account which we have made as a teacher account, I'm showing you another tab, which looks wise as similar. If you see the top right corner, it is given as welcome student. This is a student account. Now, uh, looks wise like uh, more or less it's similar, only the features changes when it's a different account. I will go to a teacher account and under teacher account, you will see that left-hand side, we have some tabs, which is there like courses, classes, my mouse, if you see, then students reports. This I will explain you uh, like what are the things which is there. Now under courses, we have like uh, different courses like introduction to programming. We have advanced programming. We have web development. We have another course called game development. 
We have another course called Advanced Game Development. We have Data Science and Advanced Data Science. Now, when we take into picture, we uh, are uh, catering to a, a target group of, uh, you can say grade four onwards or grade five onwards. And uh, here, uh, the pedagogy, what we follow is that we will be showing your video lessons. And after watching this video, I will just go to the course to introduction to programming. If you go ahead with that, this like programming, which is there, like you will see a video lessons. Now, whenever you start any details of uh, starting a, uh, it's an introductory video. This video will show you exactly uh, the, what you will you can do in computer science and what are the things which is there. Now, to just start with the video, I will just. Uh, you will see that some yeah, I will uh, sound will be muted and all. There will be a, like a subtitles is always there, and I can speed up this uh, video where I can make it at 1.5x or I can make it at 1x, depending upon the speed and the capacity of a student to learn. And taking this like this is an introductory video where students will be learning the concept, what is computer, like instructions, how to give, uh, like uh, make, like what is variables, what is loops. Taking JavaScript as a language, as a coding language, the student will be learning the entire concepts of computer science. So after watching this video, this entire video, whatever we have, it's less than three minutes video for entire thing. It can be a one minute video or two minutes video. Now, this is an introductory video. Now, after watching this video, students will go to uh, exercises where we'll be going there giving an instruction. These are all micro lessons. Now, when we are telling you micro lessons, it's a lessons which is like uh, slowly a student will be going ahead that what they will be learning. It's a small, small exercises. Now, here in exercises, which is there like they have to make a robot moving from one place to another place. Now, how to give instruction? What exactly computer understand? Is it English? Is it a vernacular language? And how you make a, a, a computer understand? So those things will be there in the video. So student has to watch this video and they have to understand that if I want to make a robot moving from one place to another place, so what can be instruction? It is like uh, uh, the binary languages and those things. Now, when you go ahead, what is like a syntax you have to follow. Now to give a syntax, now taking this as a JavaScript, if you are making a robot moving from one place to another place, what will be the correct syntax? So in this video, this will be given over there that you have to make a robot moving from one place. You have to give robot dot forward and then there will be a question mark. Student has to do it. After watching this video and the student has to go to a code editor. Now there will be an inbuilt in the software. We have a code editor. Now after watching this video, you have to go to this code editor. I will just push this thing. Now when you go to a code editor, there is this, uh, the tasks which is mentioned in the right top corner, which is there like you have to make a robot moving from one place to another place. So the task is already given. Now they have to, the student has to follow the task and write the syntax on a correct manner. Now, when I'm writing the syntax, now student will see that and they will run the program and see how exactly it's functioning. Now, when you go ahead and you run the program, you will see the robot is moving from one place to another place. And then you validate the program, whether it's right or no. When you validate the program, it is passed, then you can go to the next exercise. Now, when I'm telling you micro lessons, it is just not that you are making a robot moving from one place to another place. It may happen that you take a robot moving in the right direction. Now, when I'm telling you uh, micro lessons, it's a slowly the next uh, syntax, what will be there to making a robot moving from one place to another place, taking a right turn. Now the robot has to move a right turn and then they have to reach the goal. Now, same, similar way they follow the uh, video, then in the video, every details will be there. Then they go at the code editor. I will just click the um, code editor and 
task is already mentioned there. Student has to follow that task. Now, when you follow the task, you have to write that correct syntax that how exactly a robot is moving from one place to another place. Now, when you are giving that instruction, you have to run the program and you will see similar way the robot is moving from one place to another place. Now, after that, there is a exercise is also there, this type of exercise, and there will be exercise given to a student. So student has to follow this and actually go to the code editor and do this programming. So student follows those video and after that, there will be an exercise. They have to slowly do the exercise, complete the exercise. They have to follow the task in that it is given over there how to make a robot moving from one place to another place. Similarly, a similar way, they have to go ahead there. Now in similar manner, one by one, they go for entire concepts of what is for loops, what is if else, all the details of computer science will be dealt by similar manner. However, it is like a sequential manner, which we have told that slowly and slowly student will be learning. Now I'm just showing you another course. This is another, like, uh, this is another video, which I'm mean showing you the squeezing a bug, which is there. Now student will be learning that how, what exactly bug is. Now what exactly bug is, any error which is there, now how to do this error. So student will be learning the concept. Now suppose the instruction you are giving, it has to be a right instruction. It is a sequential instruction. It is not that you uh, change the instruction, the entire programming things will change. So all the details will be there, will be uh, given on this video and slowly and slowly the student will be learning. Now here it is in the video, it is mentioning that if you are making a robot right movement, then how many forward movement you have to do to reach the goal, those things will be there. So you should know what are the errors and how to do that. Now coming to our next uh, left hand side, you will see and slowly and slowly these are the things which will be given. If you see this icons, if left hand side icon where mouse is there, these are all videos and these are all exercises. And we have after that they have to complete each quizzes like similarly sequential wise, they have to go to variables quiz one, and then they go to quiz two, quiz three. This way they have to go by sequential manner. And after that, this exercise is what we have, uh, more or less uh, it's approximately 100 plus exercises we have. So till quiz seven, and it has to be on a sequential manner. Because I'm in a teacher account, I can do it. When you go for a student account, student has to, first go one exercises, then have to follow next exercises, they cannot jump the exercise. Now coming to our next program, which is a HTML, I will just show you. Now this being a storyline here, it is just again an introductory video where two chefs are competing with one another. Now here the storyline is that you have to prepare a cake. Now to prepare a cake, this is a story which is given over there. Now, after watching this story, they can go to the exercise. This is less than a minute video. And here the student will be learning the concepts of HTML. Now, when you watch this video, what is HTML? Why we use HTML? So all the details will be there. Now, HTML is used for describing objects. Now, as a student, how to write the syntax, it is an opening tag and a closing tag. Here, one thing is that this being a different uh, language, syntax changes. Now, what type of concepts they will be using within the syntax, those things, because computer science concepts is more or less similar in if, else, or the, all the details, only the syntax changes mo most of the times. Now, here they are preparing a cake. Now, how to prepare a cake with this HTML concept, the video will be telling that. Now, after watching this video, they have to prepare a cake layer by layer. Now, the syntax, which is, uh, it is task is already given. Now I have to write the correct syntax and you have to run the program and you will see how exactly this, and this being a motivation sector, a student gets a three star. Now, just if I want to put a frosting above a cake, so what can be like uh, this? This again, a video will be telling the details that how to prepare a frosting, all the details is there. So what I will do, it, I'm just skipping this video and going to directly to a code editor. 
Now in this code editor, which I will show you this, uh, it's, it's mentioned that you have to put a frosting above the layer. Now there is nothing called question mark, which is there. So student has to understand where to put a frosting. So syntax, which is uh, what type of uh, syntax you have to give as a frosting that also you have to be very clear with that. And then you have to run the program and you will see this is a frosting above the cake, which is there. Now, uh, similarly, this entire thing, student will be going one by one and they will uh, put a cake, then they style the cake. So those things is there, how to uh, style the cake, what is like, those details is everything it is there. So when you are going ahead with that, so all the details will be there in this. Now they are following like how to put a style on the cake, all the details layer by layer. They have to just follow this and then they go to the code editor, what is CSS and they have to do and run the program and all. So slowly and slowly, they will be learning the concepts of what is CSS, what is HTML and they develop the, with the, uh, it's an engaging factor. It's a uh, slowly and slowly, the concepts they will be learning and they will, it will be a fun filled uh, things. And slowly, slowly, they will be learning the entire concepts of HTML. Here also, they have to go uh, complete quiz one, then complete quiz two, like that quiz three, quiz four. And each and every uh, course, when a student complete, they get a certificate that's there. And I will show you another uh, uh, concepts of where, which is a game development, which is uh, lots of like uh, students uh, like it's again, it's uh, lots of engagement is there. Now here is this one game, which I'm showing you is a player and a goal, which is a maze game. Now here, when I am telling you it's a game, student will be uh, creating a player and student will be creating a goal. Now here, if this will be like where to put a player, where to put a goal, which coordinate it will be there. This entire video will be telling you the details over there. So it will be X axis, then it will be where you have to put an X and Y axis. Entire details will be there in this video itself. So a student has to follow this video, then, then exactly go to the code editor and write the programs and how exactly it will be doing it. Now, after watching this video, I will just directly go to the code editor and which coordinates and entire details. And you have to see that you have to create a player and in which coordinate you have to put a player that also you have to mention and you have to mention that which position you have to uh, create a goal. Now, when I'm creating a player and a goal, I run the program. You will see there's a player is in zero one and goal is in five one. Now, as it is, which is like uh, lots of time, a student makes a mistake in any program in our things. It's a very common mistake a student do every time whenever they write a program. So instead of player, I'm just giving you example, they misspelled a word and uh, then you run a program. How exactly it works in our platform? It will be normal crash, just like a normal game happens. And AI correction tool will tell you in line number one, this player is not defined. Student can understand, student can follow those instruction and they can rectify the problem. So this inbuilt, it's their AI correction tool, which is their student just follow those instruction, correct those instructions and they can run and it is good to go. It may happens they can put in instead of one, I can put in 10. However, the syntax is right. I will run the program. Player will be in different coordinates. It will run. However, you have to just see those tasks which is mentioned in the right top corner and you have to follow those instructions and then they create this. And same way and slowly and slowly they create some walls. These are description which is there, how to create walls. Now entire details will be given over there, how to create a wall. So you have to create the wall.create00, then wall.create10. Wall All the details will be 
there and slowly and slowly student has to write that. Now here they follow the instructions, entire details, which is there. Now, if I just write this, this will take time for just uh, to show this, how exactly it is working. I will just copy that thing to create a wall for that. Now for that, how exactly the game works, I will show you. Now here it is there, I'm creating a wall. So the semicolon is very, very important. When you run the program, you will see the wall has been created. Now, after doing all this exercises, slowly and slowly, one by one, they actually create a game which looks like this. They create a game like this. They can play this. So they create a wall, they create a monster, they create the keys, they set lives, and they play this game like that. However, to create this game, they have to know lots of aspects. What is for loops, what are variables, what are the arrays, how to create walls, how to set lives. So all those details, slowly and slowly, students will be learning those concepts and then they can develop those games. So it's, it's, again, I will not tell it's very easy to go ahead and just make a game like that. Those things they will be learning. So uh, these are like courses, like overviews, what we are there, inbuilt details. Now coming as like, uh, as a teacher, after doing the uh, exercises, they can give like creative mode. Now here, this can act as a project student will be given some tools, which is already inbuilt over there. They can just create a game. All the details documents will be given over there. These are all samples, which is there like tile types. They can go for what type of obstacles, what type of grid tiles, what type of sounds, these things, they can use that in their uh, programming languages in grid functions and all the details. And then they can go at the code and then they see those things and they can run the program like that. Now, when you run the program, you will see start, you can put the grid like this. So these things which is there, and these are for student who is not uh, like, they, not excellent, but yes, they are good. They can create their own, those tools which we are given. So they are already uh, three games which is there. Uh, the, those students can create their own games. However, if we see, if a teacher feels no, the student is excellent, and they can develop from zero level. So they can just go to the description. It's a blank editor, which is there and they can create there. And this can be shared among teachers. It can be shared among students. So those things, which is already inbuilt. Now coming to a few, another tools as a teacher, when you are taking a class now, it is like, uh, I'm just showing when you go for a student account. Now in student account, there are three courses I have already given to a student access. Now I have decided as a teacher, no, I will be only catering to one course, which is introduction to programming. Student will only see this course and then we can discuss further and then they can go for the next course. Now, when you go ahead, I will refresh this automatically the student cannot access any course. The teacher has given only one access for a course, student is good to see only that course. So they cannot see any other course. It may happen that uh, within the course, you see that in introduction to programming, there are a few chapters. I will only go for maybe uh, see taking a right turn. I will just take till this chapter I will complete this within the class and then I will discuss and then I will go for the next chapters. So when you go for a student account, you will see that taking a right turn, a student can only see, student cannot see beyond. So those controls are always there with the teacher. And if you are going for like a, a teacher thinks, now if I want to add students, now this is creative mode is 
against teacher depends it they will allow or whether they will not allow it depends now whether you want to allow or whether you don't allow it's all depends upon the teacher to give the access to a student now when you add students now you can add enter manually means you can manually enter the student with username which you create as a teacher first name last name and password we don't need any email address we have already got a kids safe seal on a global level and here it is happening that as a teacher you can create only 10 or 15 students it may happen that you have 50 students so for a 50 students it is always better to go ahead with the code you can just join the code click the code you can copy the code and there will be join educode.org and directly you can go to the code editor so those things which is already there within the system so those uh, you don't have to go for manually you can just give the class code and the students directly enter into the class there is something which is there like reports which is very very important now uh, how exactly um, student uh, will come to know yes reports is very very important now when you are going for reports each and every subjects wise you can get a reports like introduction to programming there's an overview which is given like how many exercises completed per student uh, what are the attempts how much how many attempts they have done time spent and this is just an overview total time spent per student average this is a general class overview you will get that more or less you can get a, a csv which you can download and this csv which you have downloaded you can get analysis of the csv you can uh, see the csv you can understand you can uh, screen share the uh, like details with your parents and all those things which will be there so this will be uh, a broad uh, view you will be getting that apart from that uh, if you want to just go for individual reports like how many student each student what exactly their progress so we have created like few demo details like and those details will be given and you can see each and every details of a student and how many exercises they have completed and total time spent per student all the details will be given over there in reports so those reports is you can generate and you will see those reports you can share with parents you can share with student discuss that where exactly they have to do much better those details will be there so these are like a uh, few details uh, like tools which i have shown this is for like uh, as a teacher now when you go for a student you will not uh, see those details because teacher has given only access to those so and um, there is like uh, another part which is like very very important now as a teacher as a, as we told that you don't need anything like uh, much more to know there is always a solution which with which is there now if you are going for view solution as a teacher if you need anything like that so you get those solution which is a read only mode so you can get the solution which is there in built so student will not get those solution as a teacher you will get those so those uh, details which is already in built Uh, any queries definitely you can put in the chat box so we are uh, definitely will be uh, helping you to understand much better so peter you want Thanks, to share yeah thank you yeah thank you hear me now so you uh, peter you have and like any any questions yeah. you can ask now can you hear me now devajan yeah we can we can hear you i i can hear you i can yes. hear you peter yeah. okay good So there is one question on the uh, on the chat box. Thanks, uh, Kidspire. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, his question or her question, sorry, uh, is Educode seems great. Is there any disadvantages that we should know? Um, so I, I thought about this for a couple of minutes, and, and there's always pros and cons to every system. I, I guess the one disadvantage or the one concern I think uh, with with uh, online learning these days is. is keeping the kids engaged right it's uh it's making sure that um that they keep going and, and i think the reporting tools are a wonderful thing for teachers to be able to kind of check in and make sure that uh, that if they're falling behind that those are the ones that need to be uh, talked to because 
you know, I don't know what, what grade you're, you're thinking about with Kidspire, but, uh, you know, a, a 10 year old or 11 year old, you know, of your class of 30 or 40 or whatever in the class, you know, there's always going to be three, four, five kids who, who are just not going to be engaged. They just don't want to be. And those, that's no different with, with this as well. You know, we hope to inspire and engage everybody, but the reality is, that just doesn't happen, right? So, so you know, getting them going into this, getting them excited, uh, coaching them along, really being the uh, the motivator, uh, you know, the facilitator. Uh, there's a really strong place for for teacher to play those roles and keep the kids uh, from from again from falling through the cracks, right? So, so that's you know a disadvantage probably in general, uh, but definitely uh, doesn't change with with ours. So hopefully that answers your, your question, Kidspire. Um, another uh, question from uh, Yen. Hi, I wonder if students can get materials or summaries of what they learn. Um, so from that, I'm, I'm thinking uh, you're asking like, if after they finish that, uh, that game course as an example, um, can they, uh, take that game and and sh and show it or share it uh, with others or see it themselves later they'll always have access to uh, what they've done so uh, as long as they as long as you are giving them access to the, to the course they will always have access to that they can share it with the teacher and with their classmates and the teacher has control on that on exactly what they're allowed to share um, and hopefully that answers your question um, but can they export it and take it to an outside browser? I don't think so, but uh, if that's a question, we can certainly get back to you on that. Uh, is this application solely web-based? Is there an offline solution? Uh, at this point, no, it is solely web-based. Um, we have had this question many times though, and so we are uh, putting our brains together, our heads together, and trying to think of some additional offline uh, exercises that could help augment the computational thinking, just the the, uh, the ability to brainstorm and, and work through problems. So, so stay tuned. Hopefully, the next twelve months we'll have extras like that uh, um, for 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 our, our, uh, our courses. Um, so, hopefully, that answers your question, Ian. Um, or was that Neil? Sorry, Neil, that was your yours. Um, so another uh, another question: Do you have any time limits for each access? On the opposite side of an unengaged student, some students may be over obsessed with the game and stay on computer for too long. Good point. Uh, you know, that's really uh, that's really the role again of the teacher. Um, you can control the general class on how 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 many how many exercises they they advance through and you can put the limiter for that reason uh, i believe that's why that was put into play uh, but you're right you can you can actually go to the reports and see that uh, you know one student spent uh, 30 hours on it where the rest of the class are all spending five hours on it so so you'll be able to tell uh, very quickly who those uh, students are and and and, uh, and put some actions into play for that using the limiter. I think that the uh, class limiter would be the, the way for that. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, okay, what is the recommended age group to start educating in school? So Deb Jody alluded to that. Uh, this is from Neil. Thanks, Neil. Um, we say 10 years old and above. Uh, primarily for two reasons. One is uh, so there's math concepts within some of the courses, the intro to uh, game development specifically, um, that are beyond the, the average, uh, you know, seven, eight uh, year old, definitely. Um, and, and I say average, average in North American. So that you could very well have some students that are very capable of doing this at much younger age. Um, but what we found so far is that uh, a 10 year old won't struggle. So the math concepts is, is the, the one side. Of, the other side is 
It's just the flow of the courses. Uh, we find younger kids do struggle with where do I go next? To what do I do? Uh, and we try to build in, you know, some uh, flashing uh, buttons once they finish the video so they know to go to the code editor. We try to build in some of those things. And once they, once they go through, uh, you know, it once, uh, then they get the, how, how it operates. So uh, maybe more just getting them off the ground, uh, uh, maybe a function. So you could, you could potentially go younger. 10, 10 to 18, 10 to 19. We have 30 year olds uh, taking our courses, 40 year olds as well. But really this was designed for the school systems. And, uh, and we say 10 to 17, 10 to 18. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, and would you uh, recommend children as young as five? Or, yeah, I, I think I answered that. Uh, five would be a struggle when it comes to the math concepts. Uh, and, and probably likely so. Um, they really haven't developed a lot of their problem solving skills yet, right? At, at, at that young age. Again, you can't paint a brush. They're, they're not all the same, but on average. Um, and, and you would know, I guess, better than, than, uh, than anybody, the capabilities of your specific students. So, so I'd recommend if you want to test it on uh, 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 five year olds, give it a shot and, and see how they do. If, if they really struggle, um, then then might not be a good idea. Uh, the courses are difficult. They're, they're uh, as, as fun and as engaging as we try and make them, they can, and, and easy as, uh, as Deborah Jody demonstrated, they can be very difficult. So, um, so I'd be uh, cautious of, uh, of going too young. We don't want to turn them off. We want to inspire them. Um, can students chat to each other or interact during class? Not through our platform, no. Um, that this is all meant to be independent. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the last thing that uh, Deborah Jody showed you with the, uh, um, the after the course, then they can share those types of things and, uh, and uh, they can play uh, with those, but it's not meant to be a communication. That's partly due to the, uh, um, the level of uh, security that we've uh, incorporated into this and the kid safe seal that we've uh, achieved because of that. So we are looking at ways to, to try and develop collaboration, perhaps group work, because we understand that is also a big part of learning to code. And, uh, and so we hope to get there over time, but at this point, this is where we are. Um, Okay, uh, next question asked, on the, how do I use it in the classroom? Okay, the product will be a video or I need to sign up uh, to this website or an app, thank you. Um, so, so in the classroom, um, if you have access, if, you, if all the students have access to laptops, uh, then, then, you, then you can use the limiter, uh, course limiter, you can, you can uh, say, okay, you have 45 minutes, to get as far along through the course as you, as you can. And then we're gonna have a discussion period. So that there's those ways um, uh, to actually sign up for this. Yes, uh, um, we, we have, uh, we set up a, a teacher core, uh, an account or a school account uh, if there's multiple teachers and uh, each teacher then can set up their classes and we can work on training for that uh, if needed. It's, Pretty intuitive once the teacher account is set up on, on how to, to go about it. Um, but yes, that's uh, that's exactly what you do. You, you can talk to us or you can go directly to our website and there's a, a teacher um, section that you can sign up for a, a free seven day trial, or sorry, two week trial. And you can uh, uh, play around and have that more access to this. And then you can, uh, there's also a request for quote uh, right there telling us uh, the size of your class and, and what you intend on doing, that kind of stuff. And we can work with you to help set it up. So hopefully that uh, answers that question. Uh, cost of the platform, it varies. Um, so we uh, work with um, classes as uh, small as 10 uh, and schools as, as large as, as 2,000. And uh, so volume um, uh, speaks and we're willing to certainly negotiate and, uh, and look at the larger uh, um, um, agreements for uh, groups and, and, and such. So 
Um, again, there's a request for quote and we can get into specifics um, on that and, and see what you're, uh, what you're looking at. So hopefully that uh, um, helps understand, but uh, appreciate all the questions. Lots of, lots of great questions. And uh, again, uh, you know, if you're interested in, in, uh, in further discussions, one-on-one, -on -one, we'd be more than happy to, uh, to set something up um, to discuss further with you. So I don't see any other questions, David. So I don't, I'm not sure if. Uh... All right. Well, uh, yeah. Thank you, Peter and Deb Jode, for your presentation, providing excellent insights on, uh, on, on essentially coding with zero experience, right? And so um, if you want to continue the dialogue or contact Peter directly, um, both of these things are fully accessible through the Whova app. And um, feel free to utilize the question and answer um, session or question and answer functionality on the Whova app. I know Molly even copied uh, one of the questions on here. So thanks for that. Um, and, and thank you all for coming. Why don't we give a round of applause for, uh, for Peter and Debbie Jody? Yeah, we can do a virtual round of applause. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your thanks, time. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest, yeah. of the, uh, rest of the show. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye.